Hello and welcome to this episode of In Discussion With from Medical Update Online. Today I'm talking to Deborah Evans about the menopause clinic that she runs at Remedy Health Pharmacy in Winchester. So please, could you start by introducing yourself? My name is Deborah Evans. I'm a pharmacist and um, and now an independent prescriber. My speciality is in women's uh, reproductive sexual health and menopause. Um, but I also am able to prescribe in a, in a number of different areas where I'm competent to do so. I run and own a clinic in Winchester in Hampshire called Remedy Health, where I'm also the superintendent, pharmacist and clinic director. And can you give us a brief overview of your role, what your current job involves? In my role as clinic director, and main lead clinician at Remedy Health, um, I get involved in seeing patients and clients face to face. can be anything from going through a consultation to understand uh, what might be going on through their gut health, maybe their general health, or if it's with regard to the menopause, it may be where they are with respect to their journey through that time. I take bloods, I give vaccines, um, we recommend a whole range of diagnostics. I can get involved in minor conditions, although they don't feel very minor at the time, but uh, it's usually um, infections, for example, ear infections, throat infections, chest infections, where we'd go through a full examination and uh, potential treatment if indicated. As clinic director, I'm also involved in overviewing our clinical governance and making sure that we meet all the regulatory requirements. In fact, we're very proud to do everything we can to exceed any regulatory requirements and to put um, our sort of gold standard governance in place. Um, And as superintendent pharmacist, of course, I also get involved in uh, the supply of medicines. Now, I understand that you run a regular menopause clinic. And my question is, Is there an unmet need here? Oh, massively, Christine. Um, I mean, 50 percent of the population will go through the menopause. It's it will happen to all of us females um, reaching that age. And uh, it may happen very abruptly in the case of a surgical menopause or related to, to chemotherapy, for example. Or if we're going through a natural menopause, it can take several years. And there's this belief that we get through the menopause. But in my experience, both personally and professionally, I think many problems only just begin once periods have stopped and the menopause has been met. So in terms of unmet need, absolutely. I think at the moment, the data suggests only about 15% of women are prescribed HRT. Um, That's 85% of women who are not. Some of those may have real reasons why they cannot be prescribed HRT. But in the main, I would say there are many, many, many women from 40s, if not before and upwards through to end of life who are suffering needlessly as a result of not being listened to and treated to appropriately. Mm. So what kind of symptoms are we talking about? Is it more than hot flushes? Very much so. I mean, entering into the perimenopause when we're going through significant hormone fluctuations, our oestrogen and other hormones are in decline. So we're feeling the effects of both the decline in hormones, but also the imbalance in hormones and the fluctuations. So we can have good days and bad days. It can be a very confusing time for women. For many, it happens in their mid 40s, but could be earlier, could be later. And it usually happens at a time when we're hugely busy managing families, older parents, busy careers. And so often we put it down to other things, stress um, and workload, poor sleep, etc. And then we move into the menopause when we're in long term, particularly estrogen deficiency. And the point of sharing both of those scenarios with you is that these hormones are not just our sexual and reproductive hormones. We think of them very much in terms of our reproductive years and and periods and pregnancies and sexual characteristics. But these hormones are really important to us. Estrogen, progesterone, testosterone are all powerful neurological hormones, which means they have a big impact on the brain. So when they're either out of balance, fluctuating or in decline or all three, 
then we can really feel it mentally. So a lot of women um, experience anxiety and depression often for the first time. And they will explain to me, I've, you know, I've not been like this. Some women who've had depression, and anxiety in the past feel significantly worse. Cognitive function declines. People experience memory loss, brain fog, um, all sorts of, of troublesome symptoms, loss of libido, sleep difficulties. Hot flushes um, are the sort of one uh, typical symptom that we're all looking out for, but 30% of women won't have hot flushes. So they're waiting for those to happen and think that they've sailed through the menopause without symptoms, but in actual fact, they're discarding their joint aches and pains, their pins and needles, their tinnitus, their dry eyes, their dry skin their sore mouth, bleeding gums, et cetera, et cetera. So there are many, many, many symptoms. IBS can flare up. Um, I haven't even mentioned the genital urinary syndrome of the menopause, where we can become more sensitive in our bladder, urinary frequency, incontinence, leakage, dryness in that area, increasing thrush, UTIs. And so Often we think something else is going on and it's a it's a peak time for women to seek referrals to specialists when in actual fact addressing their hormone decline would make all the difference to how they feel and their symptoms. Mm -hmm. You've told us about the symptoms and that leads us on very nicely to hormone replacement therapy, HRT. Why should HRT be used? So I think it's really important to understand the role that HRT plays in addressing the symptoms that I've described. Whilst a good lifestyle, exercise, good diet, not drinking too much, not smoking, all of those things can help with menopause symptoms. Um, and there is some evidence that um, additional supplements and remedies may be of assistance. Fundamentally, unless we're addressing the decline in hormones, then we can't fully address the symptoms. And what we haven't talked about are the significant benefits associated with HRT. And so with any medicine, we should always balance the risks versus the benefits. What we now know from the evidence is that women as a population who take HRT, live longer from all-cause mortality than women that don't take HRT. And this is because living with long-term hormone deficiency, particularly estrogen, carries risks. And if we replace that estrogen, we can address those risks. And it's very well supported with the evidence now. So those risks for women who are now postmenopausal would be increased risk of cardiovascular disease, so heart attacks and strokes, increased risk of type 2 diabetes, of osteoporosis, of course, where estrogen replacement is a first-line therapy, um, increased risk of um, some cancers, such as bowel and bladder can cancer, um, and also there's emerging evidence to suggest that Alzheimer's um, increases as well, so um, in addition to a number of other things. So, by taking HRT, women are not just addressing their immediate symptoms, which can go long beyond the menopause itself, but also looking at protecting their long term health. And we know from the evidence that we've got that those benefits for health protection um, are particularly relevant if you start HRT within 10 years of completing the menopause, so one year post period and and or and or. Uh, under the age of 60. So it's important for women to recognise the benefits go beyond symptoms alone. And I, and I hear a lot of women say to me, oh, well, I've, I've got through the menopause, my mother got through it, I'm going to get through it, as if we're going to get some sort of um, badge of honour that, that our bodies were designed to go through the menopause. The reality is that before the health um, protection elements that we now have, we weren't living much beyond our reproductive years. So um, I don't believe it's natural to live in this deprived state of, of estrogen. And in fact, if it was any other hormone such as thyroid, we would replace it without thought. 